Hey folks, uh, here with Frederick with a post-game discussion to this really fun uh, fifth game between us uh, that we did situation reports. Um, hey Frederick, congratulations on an amazing victory. Yeah, thank you. It was a fun game. Yeah, I mean, Although, I think... Go ahead. Uh, again, lots of... Uh, a bit reminiscent of our um, Perfa versus um, Syria game where we did... Uh, mostly ourselves versus the AI or the tribes again. Yeah, I mean, I think the map was uh, just much larger than any of us anticipated because of the change to single player map sizes yeah, and multiplayer. And yeah, we just, of course. Yeah, we forgot how big large is. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, but that let us get into the very, very late endgame, which usually you do not see uh, Dromons and Cataphracts <laughs> and Pikemen for everywhere, so... You mentioned at the early on in the game that you had a plan with um, Hati that you were trying to do. Was that the longbow UU timing attack, or was there some other secret Hati plan? Like, yeah, it's uh, you can do multiple things down that path uh, on multiple ways. You can just uh, if you're making contact early enough, you can just uh, ultra rush, getting mm -hmm. composite bow early, or then do an attack with your unique unit and longbows. Or and usually you don't want to go, probably don't want to go late, but as we've seen, you can go late with uh, pikemen. Yeah, what made you choose Hati for that strategy? Just because they can get wood from any unit, or? Um, no, because the unique unit provides you with melee route. So I see. You so I'm looking for some range support unit, which is you can either go towards cataphracts and then rely on horse archers, but they are only strength six, mm -hmm. or go for longbows. Or of course there's still siege engines, like if you go on Ergos and then later Mangonos, but they've kind of fallen out of favor a bit. Yeah, I feel siege is just too slow, and now that I think like. Um... Unlimbered Siege takes extra damage. It, even in yeah. forts, they're very hard to defend, and cavalry just destroy them, and you're going to yeah, have you, you, cavalry. Previously, you could like build your defensive line with onagers and forts, and that's just not possible anymore. Especially on neutral ground, then the, then the enemy will just like move his cavalry units in, and then they're standing on in, inside the forts. <laughs> yeah, I also feel like it makes your army very, very static. Um, yeah. And especially on Inland Sea, the water movement means that like you could just sail around my line potentially if i lose control of the water and then what do i do <laughs> like my, my manganels are on the wrong side <laughs> so yeah how did uh city spacings feel this was our first multiplayer game with a wider city spacing i think it could be a bit closer but it's overall it's it's okay like for tribes it's definitely better than the very close yeah, facing from before where everything was just rushing in. Yeah, so I feel like that's an improvement, of course. Where you, uh, I feel like tribes, still, but there's yeah. still a lot of empty spaces. It's, uh, especially, I don't know if it was just in this map. The there's so much empty space along the coastline, so it's very hard to fill everything in. Even like we both made a, an effort to like collect our uh, borders from the cities there. Yeah, this because is the movement is so important. Yeah, this is a long reach here. Like neither of us were able to quite connect this. Um, yeah, it was a it was a long way, and I I like the city side state, state placement just because I feel like it prevented tribes from bleeding into each other, which would make like I, I've just had too many experiences where I roll up on a camp and seven tribal units are like, "Hello, we're from three different camps, and we're here to kill you." Um, so. But yeah, I, I, it's also nice because it's exactly the same as single player, so you can kind of build build a feeling for how much space the city gets. Some of the smaller sites would actually get very cramped, I felt. In the other one we're here, I feel like every city could breathe um, and felt impactful. Let's talk about the sea uh, in Inland Sea. Um, it is, I feel like whoever wins the sea basically wins this map. Definitely makes any attack easier if you have control of the sea just for saving orders from movement, getting behind any defensive lines that might have been set up. So it's pretty important to control the sea. Yeah. 
and the north and south like we we both ended up mostly expanding the north i feel like the north had better land i don't know if you would agree um you made peace with the gauls very early as well and just sort of kept it um which i guess prevented your expansion to the north but also prevented them raiding from you yeah yeah uh i scouted the north northern coast early earlier mm -hmm. and the uh i think the empty yeah. coastline is even longer there and yeah, i, mean, I just... didn't know if it how it was looking in the south at that point but i was just looking at the really long stretches of land that i would have to use ships anchored ships to bridge if i wanted to get to you so uh, i was uh expanding south at, a, at this point also because i had peace with the gauls i couldn't expand along the uh, northern coast as well or then later on once this once i made that decision yeah i found myself bouncing between the north and south because i had war with the numidians and the vandals um and it was it wasn't great it's always nice to concentrate your forces in old world because you only have limited orders fighting on two fronts is just horrible um it's, it's unavoidable sometimes but Maybe I maybe I should have pieced the Numidian like this land is kind of crap, right? <laughs> like this isn't really I mean, the fur the is only nice, but... furs are up here. Yeah, that's true. So but it, Which it's... I was missing. <laughs> I mean yeah. I, I could have gotten them, but I didn't realize. So there I, there's I the wine. The yeah. Speaking of missing resources, yeah. there is the wine. I was looking for the entire game. It's just yeah. hiding right there. They all the surprisingly they're all all resources on this map, I yes. think. One would hope there's on a map this map. big. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so in terms of the map, like neither of us really had great vision, partly because the map was so big. Um, I think you didn't get Portcullis for a long time. So even though you had uh, Oracle and thus had agents in these cities, you didn't actually place those agents until pretty late. Um, how do you feel on Inland Sea as a dual map? Is it like, for me, it's one of my favorite dual maps because I feel like it promotes a lot of interesting gameplay with the sea. Sometimes the sea is interesting, pa in interestingly patterned. Um, it's pretty balanced. The mirror map feels good. What's your take? I like I like it. I would prefer if there were some islands in the sea more often, yeah. especially in a sea this big. Yeah, having some sort of rich island here in the middle would have been really cool that we could have fought over and like approaches to the island or something. It doesn't even have to be rich. It's, yeah, it's it's just also there. just uh, makes the sea combat more interesting if there's at least yeah. some other. You know, if, Depending on how um, big the islands actually are, you can then have more choke points at the sea. Um, yeah. So then naval battles don't become as you can make a choke point with a line of ships. Then and it doesn't just become I have more ships, so I envelop your fleet and then you're gone. Yeah, I feel like naval combat is very much whoever builds more ships or has stronger ships. You did a great job with promotions on your ships, like Seaborn, uh, the Cleave, this dude on the Coxwain routing ship. Um, yeah, it, it is very much... It, neither of us was artisan, but had either of us had an artisan family, that also would have been felt in ship combat because of the plus 20% bonus for all ships. He's like, my ships are just stronger than yours. Yeah, you basically, you either are one take up or you have to concede the sea against the yeah. Artisan. yeah. Or you're uh, just so far ahead in numbers that it doesn't matter. Yeah. Are there other maps that you like for duels apart from Inland Sea? I'm pretty fond of Continent, which we played once, I think, which also had an Inland Sea. Yeah. <laughs> strangely enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, Continent is a bit. Uh, there's probably a bit. The problem with it is there's probably too many net resources making hunters even stronger. Yeah, I remember that was a super, super rich uh, map. I've, I've tried Coastal Rain Basin, did a lot of duels on that many, many months ago. It's good, but the games feel very samey, um, just because like, you always have mountains on one side and always the river on the other. And then there's like, I don't know, it's interesting, but it it doesn't feel like, I don't know, I kind of like Inland Sea more. And Seaside, I love Seaside as a map script, but it just does not work well mirrored because you get water on all sides. So you're like on this crushed peninsula and then usually the starting locations are just too close to each other because um, there's water all around. Continent, yeah, I think, is similar. It's also Maybe. very random, like how far apart. Sometimes you are yeah. farther apart and sometimes you're very close. Yeah, Inland Sea so, gives you then, nice yeah. consistency. Go ahead, sorry. 
I mean, there's also um, the arid plateau with you can also choose big lake which is uh, the big lake it's similar to inland sea although less food to go around yeah that yeah. map feels like there's just not enough wood and food um it does make for interesting gameplay but it also just makes you feel like the map hates you <laughs> if you're trying to build units that use wood like your wood strategy would not be possible uh, on that map at all like just there's not enough wood um yeah you wouldn't be able to support longbows and your unique unit and romans so like it's not not there's not enough wood so cool all right let's uh talk about the early game um nation selection i chose persia because i love persia and every time i don't take persia i'm sad i didn't take persia um mostly because i think their unique unit is great their order economy is the best in the game um their choices oh, cool. of families are amazing clerics especially now super strong clerics statesmen statesmen are just so good as a family like an order every city like amazing decree in your the, seat. yeah the combination of families is just every order you can get it's like yeah hunter, exactly hunter doubles elephants and camels yeah statesman gets an order just by itself and you can always build decree in their seats in the seat yeah and clerics and get those temples clerics gives you easy monotheism yeah. And the double bonus from temples, and then there's the Persian pastures, so you have everything basically. Or yeah, everything. I I wish I could take riders, but I I don't know what which of the three families I would drop for riders. Um, maybe clerics realistically, but then you have to go get religion Certainly annually, not. which feels horrible. <laughs> <Clerics> so are... <laughs> they're too strong right uh, now. Yeah, yeah, they are. It's just they're required. You basically have to take clerics if you're playing with clerics. So although you won here without taking clerics, so maybe they're not that strong, or I just yeah. misplayed horribly. Um, talk about I, go ahead. I think I feel like they just give too much of everything. It's not like they're too strong in one aspect. Like the like with hunters, I feel like the double camp bonus is too strong, but just because from the growth you can get from camps and fish and such. Yeah. Yeah, I think 150% instead just of 200. Everything you get, you get your religion early, so you get the religion spread, then you get orders from monotheism, also an easy early law. You get um, easy early urban specialists through monks, Yep. which you can then use with um, constitution Yeah. if you want to. Um, then you get the religion also gives you culture, so your culture is also um, ahead. As well as the, the um, holy site also gives you 20%. So if you build up the cleric seat for culture, you're going to skyrocket there too. Yeah. And then uh, what else? Like in terms of science, you get the big chunk of science from uh, monotheism, but also the uh, monasteries are a huge early game science gain, like plus four. Even even if you just build one or two or two or three monasteries in your cleric cities to not get your wood upkeep too high. Just for science is like a twenty percent yeah. up on your base science, what what you start with in competitive mode and no starting tax. Yeah, it is it is really significant. Um and makes it very hard to keep up if you don't have clerics. Uh, then but the, you... uh, the seat also is like one of the best um civics pumps for inquiries. Yeah. Because so... they get that holy city. And there's an early yeah. Then you can monk. stack your paganism easily with yep. pretty much no uh, the, the usual downside that uh, where you found paganism that family follows paganism basically yeah. cancels out since you found the uh, world religion earlier. Yep. And then you get an early monk as well, which usually often is quite delayed. Yeah. For other inquiry pumps that don't, so you can get your inquiries going earlier than, than yeah. other families. <laughs> or stronger with more civics earlier uh, it's just, just yeah all around very very strong right now so let's talk you chose hati this game which notably does not have clerics and you went with yeah. land land owners uh land owners riders and patrons uh, so no traders can you talk a little about what what led you to choose hati uh, and did you have the strategy in mind when you picked it you're like ah Horses I, and I had the strategy in mind for a while, but I didn't get much chances to play Hati. And it's a pretty decent landowner start, not optimal, but two 
two uh, crop resources, like one I needed to buy a tile to get, but that's fine. You know, landowner scene can't, since you can do this in the landowner seed easily. There's also a bunch of other resources around which you can put a specialist in easily as landowner. Yeah. Like there's a salt and like gems in reach. So. Yeah, I really like landowners because they just let you have an amazing capital because you can just grab tiles. Yeah. <laughs> very aggressively and just like oh that ore is 10 tiles away or five tiles away let me go get that ore some gems sure why not right and the rural specialists are cheaper as well you get some citizens to start with mm -hmm. so it's just really easy to get a super powered capital um and then what yes, led you to speak, speaking of rural specialists I, I don't think we put this down in dog band, but maybe we can talk about it a bit is um luxuries you had almost no luxuries for the longest of time i think yes and you got some luxuries, I think, very early and sent them to cities. Yeah, um, yeah to get, get got some salts online to send to my rider cities because uh, you get 50% more since it's a favorite resources from the riders if you put them in mm -hmm. the city. Yep. So it's one of the strengths of landowners that you can easily, oh, this city has a bunch of luxury resources let me found landowners here and you can yep. easily snarf them, them up very quickly yeah. yeah did you consider traders at all or do you feel they're just too weak compared to the other ones yeah like the and not even when the um billion resources gave orders which could have been very strong it's but it's just too so situational like the, yeah they are, the the billion resources are just not um consistent enough you can get yeah. lucky with them, like having a, coast, a coastal city with like three or four pearls. Yep. And yeah, it, it looks really, really good. But sometimes you find like, oh, here's one silver and there's one gems and then that's it. Yeah. And then you're very, very sad. Yeah. Any other families that stand out in the game that are strong, apart from like clerics and hunters and I guess landowners and riders are Landowners, I think, are really strong now. I, I value the money very highly from the crops, just for rushing officers. Yeah, yeah. That, that and extra... statesmen are always very strong. Yeah, I, I, I think I would vote statesmen the strongest family in the game personally, <laughs> just because, like, do they really need to get a treasury in every city? Like, it. I didn't even notice that, like, for the longest time, and then I was like, oh. Why, why do I not have gold when I'm not playing Statesman? I was like, oh, <laughs> they just passively give you gold and orders for every city. <laughs> like, <laughs> previously, play, yeah, I mostly noticed it when playing Egypt. Yeah. That you, know, you were lacking gold so hardly, uh, so hard until you um, got to Tyranny. Because yeah. then you did nothing, nothing of, no no one of your families did everything, anything for gold. Uh, for gold so. Yeah. Uh, but that changed now with Landowners. So I started with a builder, um, mm -hmm. which I, I liked because the very fast workers, I maybe overbuilt workers because they were so fast to build, so why not? But I also like never really had idle workers since I was Persia and had hilarious amounts of orders. Um, yeah. I do like the builder start with the builder governor, um, just speeds up getting that capital up and running. You chose a schemer start here. Um, yeah, but fairly traditional for multiplayer. Just uh, it's another thing that clerics or clerics uh, in general and Persia, Persia specifically allow you some leeway in terms of orders. Everyone else is just so order constrained, so you're kind of forced to go schema at least with, if you play with tribes. Yeah. Just the orders from wars is just too important to pass up. And the yeah. other things that uh, provides are still good. Invisible scouts are great since you don't have to count orders when moving your scouts up. If you have just a spare order, you can just move him. Don't have to care whether you find a forest or not. Yeah. And I mean, the with the change to competitive mode, the uh, high wisdom is not that good anymore. And they make, don't make good generals or governors. So this is not the best in this regard, but just the, the orders alone are good enough. And then you have the, which most people kind of don't, remember or don't care about is uh, when you don't get that many kids you can adopt some children is there extra. a legitimacy hit for scheme yes, adoption yes. okay still okay. i think it costs some civics and legitimacy so it's not 
that cheap, you shouldn't like spam it. But yeah. I think it's always worth getting um, the full four. Filling so. up at least four to four. Yeah. It's also great since you can adopt from other families and mm. like you have your military family, adopt from a military family, put them on politics, and then you get a governor out of that, yeah. guaranteed. So oh. you can do some cool things with that. Yeah, the early game finding 100 civics is, is tough. So. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. yeah, of course. But that's, yeah. that's not too early, actually. I mean, you usually wait. Yeah, you since should, your leader's pretty like young. Like, latest when your first child get married, gets married. Yep. Because you want to, when they start adding kids to the pool, it's too late. Yeah. But um, after the, after it's clear you, you won't get any more kids and the others starting to get out of their, or reaching the end of their um, study line, so they free up the politics and... Is there a bypass penalty on that? Using. Um, if Do they... the adoption causes by a bypass, yes, there is. But generally, but you choose the age of the kids, so that doesn't happen. Okay, so you're not adopting someone old. Got it. Um, yeah. Okay, it'll just put them in the in line. Uh, yeah, I ended up having to adopt twice this game, um, just because I think I got I got adoption events twice, and I didn't want to take the family. I think if you get an adoption event and have an error, families will be like minus twenty from every family for forty years or something, which not great um but it is eight legitimacy to adopt um which is also not great so um yeah, yeah once i, I usually it's today. minus four per yeah i think it's minus four sorry it's minus four twice here that's why it's minus eight um yeah i had to adopt twice and had the weird situation where my ruler's spouse was also an heir at some point, so because she had been adopted by the ruler's father, and I got forced off with an abdication event. I think the patriarch of Persian paganism was like, "You suck, abdicate," and I was like, "Well, I guess I do kind of suck." It was my insane order. So I was like, "I'd much rather have yeah. a judge that isn't hated by everyone." So let's take them. Um, yeah. Continuing with the early game scouting patterns. Um, Obviously, if you don't have a schemer, you kind of have to be very sort of where are some forests. And hills are better. I think the hills are just strictly better because they give you more vision. Um, yeah, of course. Any, like, do you try to scout your side? Do you beeline direct to your opponent um, to see what they're up to and get eyes on their front? Like with a schemer, you want to beeline to the other side just to get the war going. Yeah. Makes sense. And to find all the tribes and, and get wars yeah. going with them. Um, as a non-schemer? But there's always a risk. If you don't scout around your side, you risk missing some good spots. Or... Yeah. Yeah. I, I find... Talk about it in one of my sit -rips, I like only found the uh, like the northern... My northern rider city only found, found yeah. it because of the bottle boost. <laughs> because I didn't scout in that direction. I guess you for you, this, you move to your initial scout there just to uh, harvest the uh, cultural resources. Yeah, I, I scouted up the river and, and found this site, and that's why my hunter city was founded here, because I was like, this place is amazing. <laughs> like, mm. Oh, uh, look, horses in awe. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> amazing hunter seat. This is exactly what I meant. This, this city was a champion of production. It was my only decent production city. <laughs> All the others sucked. Um, yeah. And then in the early game, just to round out that discussion, usually you're trying to balance scouting and workers and military. You're probably not going to have enough orders to do all of them. Um, do you have a priority? Do you always like military first? If I have to do something with military, I do it because it kind of snowballs or do you try to do your workers or, or scouting or t talk me through what you're thinking is there. I, uh, I don't think I have like laid down any specific rules for myself. It's just usually I try to get the workers, give it priority or get at least uh, get them going. But of course, if, if any units are in combat on a tribal side, they have to move first. You can't like let them sit idle and get yeah. get attacked. Murdered. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And scouting, I guess, we played without goody huts as, as sort of has become standard yeah, in our games. Yeah, without goody hut, the scouting loses some value. But um, of course, as schema, you want to get your scout out. It's, uh, it's, yeah. uh, you have to prioritize that. Cool. All right, let's uh, talk about laws. Um, we got a lot of laws in this game. We almost got all the laws. 
Uh, you, you, I think you did. You pick up going to basement at the end, or like it was the next turn or something. Um, you were like, super close uh, on the victory turn. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's just talk about laws. Um, epics versus exploration. I tend to personally get um, rhetoric very late. I think you commented in one of my videos that I got it forums after I had built the Acropolis, <laughs> and that's nice because I mean I got the border boost card there as well, which. I have to say, getting a border boost on 20 cities was pretty amazing value uh, and made me smile when it happened. Um, but in terms of law selection, what's your thinking on epics versus exploration? The, the culture is nice for near cities because it doesn't get diminished by how far away the cities are. Yeah, that's why I took it. Just getting the, the early city ups from fighting the tribes as you keep expanding or moving your military outward. Um, that's why I prioritized it, just to get some culture going. Do you feel the movement need... bonus on Neutral River is worth flipping to later? Or like, it's pretty minor, um, especially on a non-water map. Scouts moving on water doesn't really matter. Yeah, and in Dancy, there's nothing much you can do with scouts, scouts on water. No. Except if you actually have a scheme or somehow late game, you can actually scout the enemy fleet, which is fairly difficult. Yeah. No, the fog in the, <laughs> the fog on this map. Just to like interject here, like this fog was really annoying. <laughs> like I could not. I was trying to consider whether to break into your forces at one point, and there was a giant amount of fog that I couldn't clear because it was just not efficient to clear. And I knew if I cleared it, I would show my units to you. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, yeah, this it's, is it's this is horrible. Really like, hard to engage. Uh, yeah, in ship combat. Well, because uh, you both have the same movement speed. There's no terrain penalty. Yeah, no, the closer you move, the closer. Fight, so. Yeah, the closer your opponent can. I think you said anyone who were like both balancing in one of your set reps as far away as possible, so that like yeah, you can engage with force march, but you don't really want to. <laughs> so because exactly. yeah, also it makes it makes it hard to judge whether you can engage. Yes. Because, like, do you see this? Like, you don't. Yeah, you don't get the full city few from agent anymore just like one tile outside the yeah. borders so even if you have a spy in the coastal city you won't see the full fleet like, yeah like i did poke with my scout out from the wood to the coast and back every turn yeah. just, yeah. to, just to look for your fleet yeah for a while i was yeah. hiding my fleet here because i was like i'm just going to keep it in the middle of the map and he won't know how many i have um so, but yeah, I, I had no idea where your boats were. I think around turn 104, 105, I was considered, I saw your anchored ship here and I was like, I'm going to kill it. And like, I could move in and kill it with like three units and have some other units there. But I saw like two ships here and I was like, I don't know. I can't see if there's more here. Yeah. And it's really bad if I just moved into, <laughs> moved into range, because then I'll just lose everything. And like, you can't really recover from losing your ships. Um, cause then your enemy just blockades anything that can build a ship. And you're like, well, like on the on one ten, I like like my front trireme. I force marched it and moved towards your ships before moving back and anchoring just to get a handle on where your ships are. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, returning to laws as we sort of digressed into ships, yeah. um, slavery and freedom. Um, slavery just seems strictly better. Like the money from specialists for freedom is just not does not make up for mines and quarries doing 20% more. Um, just yeah, it because... depends how much you build. In like fact, for me, I didn't build many mines for a long time. Like in general, the slavery bonus uh, scales better since you're going to get more improvements up mm -hmm. than specialists. Yeah. Uh, but there's also, of course, the event side. The events yep. on the freedom side are much better. Yeah. Like the one I got with the, where both job, both choices are great. Like either like one citizen in every city can as a, might not help you if you're already good everywhere, but can be really strong. Yeah. And the the opinion bonus for eighty turns is just nuts. Yeah, I think that would have solved your uh, order issues as well. It would have just given you a nice nice buffer eighty turns and basically till the end of the game. So yeah. Yeah, freedom definitely has better events. My habit lately has just been start with slavery, and then when I get the event to like, you should really swap to freedom. And sometimes you get a free law change. I'll take I'll take a free law change if it's offered. Um, but 
theoretically slavery is, is better, although the freedom events are, are nice. I don't know. It's it's a tough goal now. I think it's no longer just slavery by default. Um, centralization vassalage. I totally forgot to swap vassalage after taking centralization early. Um, oops. Um, and yeah, you that, are bleeding resources pretty badly because yeah. of that, I think. Yeah, no. I think centralization is strictly better early, especially if you get a lot of culture in your capital. Um, because six science is pretty nice when you only have 30 science or 40 science. Um, obviously, it falls off uh, and vassalage becomes pretty big as an econ thing. You ended up, I think yeah, you but, took vassalage early. Even early or fairly early, vassalage already pays pretty big. Like all your workers are costing food, with, which also gets halved. Oh, right. That is true. Workers do take so, food units. Yeah, two versus like, one. When they when they had the uh, food changes where everything now costs more food, yeah, the, it racks up pretty quickly. Yeah, and fifty percent more outside and if you, borders. If you get uh, if you get it later anyway, if, if the, your bottom line to sovereignty comes on comes online later anyway, it's like already passed. Yeah, there's no past point the taking centralization. centralization. Yeah, I think I ended up taking it relatively early and then just forgot to swap because usually vassalage is is my go-to play. But yeah, vassalage also the no extra unit consumption outside borders is actually very, very significant in terms of econ. But I didn't even realize that like I have 40 workers, I'm just throwing away 40 food a turn, which is a lot <laughs> so, mm -hmm. for, for, for 10 civics and eight science, which is not a lot. Um, but tyranny also in general, um, or was not in general, when you, um, you got a judge leader for quite a while, yes. that's always Good time to swap. When you get when your judge judge uh, comes uh, becomes your leader, you should always check your laws and think about yeah. can you does it make sense? Does it make sense to switch to serfdom for a few turns, buy some tires, and switch back? It's only yeah, yeah. two hundred civics. Yeah, like only, and it's chill. It's it's still not a trivial cost, and the tires also cost not a, a non-trivial amount of money. But yep, I, you should at least think about it at that point. Yeah, no, I, I definitely should have because I could have bought tiles here and given myself the uh, sentinel bonus. Um, I, we'll chat later about whether I should have fallen back or whether it would have made a difference. I think in your sit rep, you, you sort of persuaded me that I should have fallen back, but obviously the advice was received too late. Um, so yeah, Col I mean judges, judges. I love judges. I, I've I've grown to love them. Um, the leader judge lets you sort of move around to every city, hold court especially in the mid game onwards there's just so many civics um yeah and well, also yeah, courtiers especially with this amount of cities <laughs> yeah especially with this many cities and also courtiers um i think at one point like my court still is pretty full of courtiers because these were all recruited by my judge um interestingly i think you actually had more courtiers recruited somehow i don't know if it's just not counting the ones that i got from the judge i guess it is but you, i guess you had more events or something i don't know i don't think i had as very many courtiers it claims you had nine. Are, like that's the the overall count yeah. over the whole game, not what I have currently. No, no, correct. Yeah, yeah. Overall. But like I recruited five from the judge, but it only is eight overall, I guess. Didn't have that many overall. So I guess you had very few in the early game. I almost had just, none, yeah. 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 So that's the Yeah. That's so the really really like judges. Uh, and yeah, the swap law thing is, is very nice for them. The other thing that's great for them, I think, is being able to upgrade, which is super useful for upgrading a stronghold into yes, a citadel. That's one of the strongest feature. Yeah. Uh, getting, it's just... the, getting the timing of your unique unit up by like another like five or six turns is, yeah. is quite a lot. Very, very significant. Um, they're they're definitely much stronger now. And those they used to be really not great, and now they are very, very strong. I like them a lot. Um, you have I mean, to be another... a bit careful with the uh, upgrading um, the lines of buildings that have specialists in them now that they changed oh really the will it eat the specialists because if you if you build if you build the, the apprentice build and then upgrade you still have the apprentice in there and then you lost the ability to build the, uh, the upgraded version directly i see okay that's that's an, that's an interesting edge case usually i don't upgrade the the other buildings it's it's the only time i really use upgrade is like stronghold to citadel for instant uu8 um I kind of like uh, if you have, I mean, if you have Odeons, if you have built them for culture or for like mainly for culture, then you can like um, basically get rid of your Odeon, upgrade that to theater and then build the amphitheater. 
now, although neither of us built a single Odie on this game. Yeah. I mean, uh, I like to build them for for my um, for civics. For yeah, it, if you have a growth city. Um, yeah. But like, it's hard because you want to build other specialists here, right? Like you wanted these scribes and a gardener. And like every specialist you build makes your poet worse. Which doesn't feel great. Yeah, and every uh, specialist in my patron city game uh, gives me to culture. Yeah, so it definitely so anti synergies. Yeah, yeah. anti synergies with patrons. Um, yeah, so poet poets I think are niche, and then Odeon by itself just like it just does not produce enough. I build culture. them sometimes for just for culture. And I would have yeah. built them in my rider cities if I had the tech for them, but since I went didn't went for Portcullis. Uh, I didn't have drama and spoke wheel for the longest time. Yeah. Um, tyranny and constitution feels like constitution is very, very attractive now. Um, thanks to that urban specialist, it scales better. Although the yeah. gold from tyranny is huge. Um, so I don't know. It's a tough call. I definitely went for the urban specialist because science was so important in this game. Although I probably got constitution too late, as I think you pointed out. Yeah, you had like seven laws in place for your correct yeah. archers, and there was no uh, constitution in there. Yeah, I mean, I think part of it was just at one point I was offered the choice to take architecture, and on a whim I was like, sure, it'll be a seventh law, and like I don't know, I, I don't know what I was worried about. It was like, oh no, like he has seven laws and I don't, so he's obviously going to come kill me, forgetting about he would have to come this entire way. <laughs> like, just not a threat at also, all. Also, architecture is two tiers. Behind yeah. sovereignty, so you're yeah. re taking a cheap tech and then getting yeah. another. Still yeah. Probably still faster than grab grabbing architecture. Yeah, the civics boost is also really really nice, um, and oh, sure. I almost always take it because it's just 800 civics. It's, civics are just they feel like I don't know oil or glue or just like something that makes everything better. If you have civic civics, everything's great in this game. If you don't have civics. It just feels horrible. You can't assign governors. You can't do anything. You can't rush if you need to. Um, Hati, of course, have the bonus where they get extra civics in every city, which is very nice. Um, it's there. It's small. It's subtle, but it, it adds up a lot. I think. Oh, it, it's 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 a lot. Like the normal base output is eight, so you're getting twenty five percent on top of that. Yeah, and you can see that. City. You can see that early game here. You're like forty percent higher civics construction than I am. Um, and that's with you having more cities. And that's with me having more cities. Then I then I take over because um, I think I was just building monks everywhere. <laughs> so, yeah, because um, they're amazing. Um, yeah. So, but in terms of constitution, I think yeah. it's one of the. I mean, usually you would often go for portcullis as a science boost, but um, constitution yep. works just works also pretty good in this regard. Yeah, it is. And it and it's cheaper since it's a tier earlier. Yep, and it scales really well. And Decrees is really nice in a pinch to have a, a city yeah. that can do Decrees if For you don't sure. have Statesmen, or a second city if, you, if you're if you playing it. Especially in if, it's, if you have, um, with landowners, you usually have some yeah. judges available, so you can also always plop in a judge and start rushing those. For yeah, money. you can just buy orders, worst case. So yeah. um, well before going to basement. Tyranny is a lot of money. Um, Although it does cost civics, yep, which is always also painful. quite a bit of uh, training as well. Yeah, twenty training is nice as well. Um, the civics cost Not is just twenty because constitution costs your training. Yeah, the that's true. Is bigger, and yeah. the uh, civics cost is uh, quite a lot lower for training. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's, it's usually forty training difference, which is it's quite quite a, a bit, quite a lot actually. Yeah. Um, colonies and serfdom, I think we chatted about. Monotheism is the clear choice if you're playing with. I mean, I think if you have a religion, you should just take monotheism, a world religion. Yeah. Polytheism. Feels polytheism very... is just uh, if if you're memeing. If the other, if, if you get get no religion, <laughs> then you have to take it temporarily to get your shrines down before you switch to monotheism. Yep. Basically. Do you ever take yeah, divine rule? About it. No. Do you do? Okay. Yeah, it's like, in single player for uh, for memes. Yeah, reasons. yeah, yeah. Legal code just amazing, even though it costs orders. Just so many civics. 
orthodoxy orthodoxy has become like I, it's grown immensely in my estimation um just because being with the russian orders i think at some point i rushed can a be bunch. very strong i never enacted it in this game you never enacted this game you need to be you need to have a game state where you have orders to spare yeah otherwise which, it's just a drain of money that's true as persia uh i definitely <laughs> definitely had a bunch of orders i could yeah. enact Surprise, uh, surprise. <laughs> yeah, so I think I rushed uh, some amount of inquiries, somewhere around 5, 7, 10-ish inquiries. Not sure here. Um, yeah, somewhere around 10 inquiries with with orthodoxy. Um, it is very expensive, though, So, uh, but it is, it is nice for purring production. I never purge world uh, religion. Also, not, not only for inquiries. I mean, inquiries are... An Anything. Yeah, Dromans got rushed. It's just yeah. like... You need to get some officers online somewhere just to rush them with orders. Yeah. Or, or here you have some kind of uh, other city that's uh, you could, don't have a judge for the family, but you want this uh, yep. luxury no, quickly instead of waiting like eight or ten turns, just like rush yep. it with orders. Yep, I think like I a very convenient tool. I think I rushed and this, honey. Orders, and since you have the uh, bunch of if you have them, uh, if you have orders floating. Then you have them every turn. So you, every turn you can have these have, have yep. a pool of orders that you can spend for for things to rush some things. And yeah. Really. Like when you're in the game, when the game state, when you're in this kind of like mid game stalemate, you have a bunch of armies sitting around, not moving, staring so at each other. Yeah. Orders, uh, yeah. Orders over each turn. It's very, it's, it's a very, very, very powerful good. law. Yeah. Tolerance, I feel like, well, really only for single player where you're trying to do some sort of multi religion thing, which like, just very hard to manage opinion for um make yeah. an argument if you have clerics and the you have either a second religion that had spread fairly good fairly yeah. decently or the spread of the opponent's religion is so good that it starts yeah. flooding into your cities then you can um switch to it briefly yeah. build a few uh disciples and start building temples in your cleric cities that's Which true you, especially if it's the enemy religion because they also have, will have revelation enacted yeah yeah so yeah, get the full yeah. <laughs> that's true that's uh that's kind of like uh yeah very, very situational in yeah. late game and uh, yeah since it does but, cost civics yeah. i think it's either orthodoxy or nothing here um doctrine i think is worth taking because temples are so strong um but Those it's clerics, a, yeah uh, definitely and but for others as well when you have a relation the temples are but definitely worth it, it is a bit of a luxury in that it does take some time to pay off uh because you actually need to build the temples yeah. and like you should probably prioritize a military tech over it um but yeah professional army and volunteers um you took professional army very early um which i think yeah was was definitely good i sort of should have realized that meant you're going down that tech tree and probably should have <laughs> changed my tech pattern uh, but in terms of the laws um I feel like volunteers is very nice, but you run out of citizens and you probably wanted them for specialists anyway. And you've probably been using them for specialists. So you probably aren't floating a lot of population. Um, like you never want to just stay on volunteers. Kind of a, either a desperate measure or yeah. like, uh, giving you a one-time boost. I mean, if you're st still, if it's an FFA or if there's lots of tribes where you have lots of wars, yeah. the um, training that's trigger true. can stack up quite a lot as well. That is true. But in a duel, that's, Usually yeah. the tribes are mostly gone by that time, and then it's just twenty per turn. It's yeah, at that point you probably want professional army. So, did you build treasuries um, to oh, take of advantage? Course. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. happy. I can yeah. build treasuries easily. It's another reason why this. Uh, oh, because of the civics boost. It's pretty good yeah. for for, uh, for Hati. Why do you say because of the base civics, or what, what do you mean in terms yeah. of? Yeah. yeah, you can easily build those treasuries. Yeah. Okay, so you've got the treasury here, which is nice. I built treasuries over a statesman getting that free treasury. It's, it's very nice. I think I, I'm growing in appreciation for the land consolidation manor line. Um, I feel I still feel like Longbow and Pikemen, just not sure what civs this really works well. I think Assyria, probably one. Hati, probably one. Arthage can work. Can work. Arthage, yeah. Um, Persia, not so much, because your unique unit is strictly better than Longbow, except for the range, I feel like. Um, the Pike, mm, I don't know. It's not strictly better. They're way more expensive. And, and Longbow is more expensive. 
or the unique unit. Yeah, that's true. They are more I expensive. I mean, they, they cost wood, which you could argue is more expensive yeah. than iron and food. But um, the training time, longbows uh, have 100 training time. And you There's 160. Units, uh, yeah. 160. It's a big yeah. difference. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I've kind of always laughed at this line, like, who gets pikemen? The other facts will just kill them. As we found out this game, <laughs> they don't. Um, I think at one point they were not plus 100%. Is usually that even if you get pikemen in time, yeah. oftentimes there's quite a lot of other army, like having, yeah. there's a lot of maces running around, which are okay against pikemen, and then the other the cohorts just get cohorts eat pikemen or, alive. So. Or uh, ballistas also work. And ballistas I find are really hard to use. Um, and every time I've tried ballistas, they do great, and then they die to a horse the next turn. Yeah, of course. <laughs> So it just feels like I'm building you units. You don't mass ballistas, you build enough. You build okay. some to... Enough to break. Okay. Like You're looking for clusters of infantry where you can use your peers. So you, yep. you have a handful of them, and then if they get killed, that's fine. Okay. The roads, like having to build roads for them is also annoying. Yeah, they're, they're, they're better on defense, or if, yeah. or if you have... Uh, if you have control of the seas here in Inland Sea, you can also use yep. them. Makes sense. But if you lose control of the sea and then... <laughs> I mean, on Inland Sea, if you lose control of the sea, you've lost the game. I mean, honestly, we probably both should be picking artisan sieves every time. <laughs> just nations that have artisans just because they're so strong. Although I don't think there's an artisan cleric combination, sadly. Nope. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so professional army philosophy. Uh, this was me trying something out. I, I honestly feel it was a mistake. Engineering would have saved me a lot of wonder costs. <laughs> um... I honestly I mean, don't. For the even... second round of wonders, you. I think yeah, you I, judge, I had a judge. There was there was no excuse. It was a tiny bit of science. The herb, yeah, like this is a big civics cost. Um, this is a big money cost, but like. Yeah, that's that's one of the disadvantages of all the cities. Like, yeah, all the law costs. All the law scale costs cities. Yeah. So. Yeah. So def definitely engineering strong, but realistically, like it, I feel like this is a luxury tech to take architecture. Um, More of a roadblock on the way to. Vaulting. vaulting for which we only care about because of discontent boosters. <laughs> um, uh, if you have clerics, iconography is also very strong. Yes, because you'll probably have monasteries. Like for me, I, like in this game, I just didn't enact it because I don't didn't have the religious buildings or enough mm. religious buildings. But if you have clerics, you get your disciples out early. You have monasteries yep. and everywhere, and probably. By the point you have vaulting, or you get vaulting, you have also temples everywhere, and the temples pay for the law, since iconography gives you money per temple, but also costs yeah. money. So it, at that point, it pays for itself, or even overpays, because cler yeah. the, in cleric cities, the, the money boost gets doubled. Yeah, so I had 18 monasteries and 18 temples, uh, and you had seven yeah. monasteries and, and nine temples. So, um, yeah. I, I probably should have picked it up. I, I don't know. I, I just there were too many things I wanted to pick up. It was on my list of like thing I would like, but I, I think I kind of spread. I was actually behind in tech the entire game and did not realize it. <laughs> I thought I was doing well, um, but yeah, like you, you had a huge lead. I mean, you, you, I got ahead initially. Yeah. Through like maybe like one of the things I don't know if we chatted about this or if I mentioned it. Uh, getting archives. Yeah, we haven't. I think we haven't I shown. grabbed. Uh, I think I grabbed metaphysics after sovereignty, like pretty mm -hmm. much right after. Yep. And then building offices everywhere and and archives everywhere. Yep. It's like the, the it's the big boost in science, or my, my where my science goes up. Yep. What's this phase? Yeah, and then I, I catch up, then I enact autarky <laughs> and holy war. I mean, the graph only tells half the picture because... Right, inquiries are not here. Don't... Yeah. I wish there was a graph of research, um, like actual like numerical research that you've invested, because I feel that would be a better representation of like science. Um, because also for me, I started inquiries earlier than usual. Yes. This time around, because I had a eloquent scholar. Yep, so, so you did inquiry two. Scho eloquent scholar leader, so you get like... One and a half times the bonus yep. by putting him in there. Yeah, the double dip is nice. So usually I try to invest in, like, through doing developing culture, I try to invest in infrastructure, sometimes even getting some um, 
festivals down, mm -hmm. accelerate culture, get some more um, citizens for specialists. Yeah. Especially if the city that isn't very doesn't have lots Great of growth, growth. Yeah. naturally. Yeah, festivals do give that lingering one culture, which is it's not. I mean, it's not nothing. So. Yeah, and the the conversion rate from Inquiry Two isn't that good. It's it's okay. Like it's not. Yeah, it's not Inquiry, Inquiry one, one, but Inquiry never built. Inquiry, Inquiry never. Yeah, it's a, it's a trap. Don't 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 touch it. Build, <laughs> build anything build, else. Build a festival. Build festivals to get to developing at least. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so engineering. I think iconography is just better probably than calligraphy like the discontent i feel doesn't matter and libraries I think I there's, just... an, the, there's an argument to be made if you're racing trying to win on points and yeah. went for libraries early yes then you can switch on calligraphy for the culture that's true but that's uh, other than that i don't think that's ever being worth it yeah like a single player if you have lots of elder specialists and trying to like get your discontent under control yeah, being cute. <laughs> the AI switched me here to pilgrimage. I'm not sure what the heck it was thinking. Why? Uh, Holy War is very much superior. <laughs> but like when I surrendered my last turn, the AI just switched my law to pilgrimage. <laughs> like I don't know why. Science. The uh, the science from growth is, is actually can be quite a lot, especially if you boost it with monasteries, and you have uh, gardeners in there. Yeah, let's see if I can. But find... it's in multiplayer. It's. The yeah. Holy yeah. Both you need... the promotion as well as the rushing of units. Yeah, even it's if you can't single... afford. Pilgrimage is a single player thing. Like when you're trying to rush th through the tech tree to finish your ambitions. Yeah. yeah. Um, it even... can be really strong there, but it's in multiplayer. You can't pass Holy War. It's... Yeah. Even if you can't afford the. Um... Like maybe if you have a judge, you can switch. You can go can swap. pilgrimage first and then switch to holy war later. But... That's true. The training cost is actually kind of rough as well, uh, especially as a judge, because you're going to be burning training for holding court. Um, yeah. So. And yeah, groves. I tend to take land consolidation late, although I'm increasingly moving away from that. Um, but yeah, guilds and elites feels like just both of these are fine. Probably elites are better for like an enormous alpha strike. Um, Guilds, yeah, very I mean, situational they, both. Both are very situational, and also like buried so far tech wise that just like autarky. I, I think I enacted this too early. I didn't actually need the econ yeah, boost from it. Very expensive. Also, the science expensive was brutal. Science. Yeah, like the dip like, in my science is me enacting autarky. Like Holy War is, is Holy War is already game, pricey. Autarky is twice. Yeah. Yeah. Like this, this was just enacting holy war and autarky. But also, like the the twenty percent output is also is also it's also pretty good. It is it is good. Um, the horse everywhere is also really nice because it basically means that you mm -hmm. can build cataphracts or horse unit units everywhere. So it's worth investing in that trade league. Very good in terms of just econ money, especially combined with I coin debasement. I started yeah. out with uh, autarky for the resources. Yep. And then once I had holy war, I switched over to trade league just to get double the sell prices yeah no it, it is great in terms of just like congrats that you sell everything for twice as much and i think coin debasement is pretty much straight up better than monetary reform monetary First, enforcement in monetary reform is a no-go yeah like it costs orders <laughs> like no 29 no like no i only have 125 orders like 20 percent of my orders for no discontent from hurrying i'm already fine with discontent like Coinage alone does so much, like and also clerics. Like this city is actually getting happier every year. <laughs> so like my discontent situation. Like you don't was the... just want to enact coin debasement just yeah. because you unlock the doll, but yeah. having it available and then once if you the need it, war yes. starts and then going yeah. trade league coin debasement. Yep, as a combo. Yep. The, the, the two laws are very expensive on civics when you yes. have them enacted. Yeah. Uh, the orders you can get when fighting wars is really, really yeah. strong. And and wars tend to be like if like there was no coming back for me once I lost these troops. Like I, I have no time. There's no. there's no, like you're just gonna keep rolling nothing. and there's nothing I can do at that point. Um cool. Why like how much I was would have been at all was able to kill, but Killing about two thirds of your army is like you can't come back from yeah. it. Yep, that is that is come back. no no comeback territory. 